My name is Stephen King. Spend some time in the dark. Please don't let me in the dark. Help me. I'm gonna scare the hell out of you. And that's a promise. And welcome to Castle Rag Radio. I am Max Booth. And I am Lori Michelle. And this is the Stephen Keen Podcast, Ooh. episode 71. How yes. have we made it so many? I don't know. We just keep going. We're like the Energizer Bunny. Despite what everyone tells us to do, we continue <laughs> to we just keep do on this going. podcast. Yes. Nonetheless, we persist. What? <laughs> Uh, we, um, today we'll talking, yeah, about the breathing method from different seasons, which right. came out in, uh, 1980 something. 82, I think. Maybe. 1980, um, hyphen. Hyphen. <laughs> <laughs> today on the show, we have Betty Rocksteady joining us. Right. She has been gone a while, and now she's back. Everybody's been gone a while. We haven't had really anybody on. We just had Spignesley on. Yeah, but he doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we haven't had a guest on in, in, in a few days. In a while, yeah. In a minute. A minute? A whole minute? Yeah, that's what people say now. They say, oh, I haven't talked to you in a minute. Is that what it is? I guess. I've never No one knows how to tell time now. Apparently. <laughs> uh, Betty Rocksteady, of course, she re- recently wrote a new novella called The Writhing Skies, right. which we published through a small press, Perpetual Motion Machine. So go look up The Writhing Skies. Right. Not only did she write it, but she also illustrated it, so it's worth buying the print version just to yeah, check it out 20 black and white illustrations kind right. of a old school betty boop type of imagery yeah, yeah it's very cool it's cool 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 and the book is kind of psychedelic and odd and disgusting and you will like it exactly and if you buy it from our website uh perpetualpublishing.com and use the discount code constant listener you will get 10 full cent off. Correct. Because we love you that much. Is that what it is? We love you. Ooh. All right. Now, The Breathing Method by Stephen King. Obviously, who else? Did you know uh, H.P. Lovecraft had, like, a brethel named Kevin? Kevin P. Lovecraft? I guess the P wouldn't be I don't know. Someone named Kevin Kevin Lovecraft just followed me on Twiddle. Awesome. Who, why would you pick that name? We all know what it's from. I bet that uh, he graduated from Miskatonic University. Probably. Oh, like every other little um, stream he'll write on Facebook. <laughs> and he's from like hell, Nebraska, or wherever that place is. <laughs> yeah. He got kicked out of the school for hell, Knox. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, he's like a cool guy. You should publish him. I should. <laughs> Tell me next, Phil. The new book from Kevin Lovecraft. <laughs> <laughs> If your last name is Lovecraft, Kevin is not the first name to pick. Obviously, that's not his last I name. I know that. I hate anyone who picks a different last name to publish on all. Oh, shut wow. up. Wow. How dare Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back to the, the show. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a minute. What was the last one I did with you guys? The Frogs? No. Was it Desperation? Oh, my God. Maybe. Been. That sucked. You should have came on when we did Elevation. That was basically Gwendy's button box times two. It was better than Gwendy. Not a lot, but... You should not. I probably won't bother. (laughs) If you've got, like, an hour to waste, (laughs) maybe. Maybe just drown yourself. (laughs) For for so many years, I read, like, every Stephen King that came out, though, but I've missed, like, I haven't read finders keeper or the newest book in that series yet and i haven't read elevation anything else out recently um yeah the outside all sleeping beauties holy fuck yeah i'm behind (laughs) that's okay so am i i read the outside all i it was not good it has the same ending as desperation somehow oh 
that's the pretty sa- bad. I mean, I mean they all go similar, in the cave yeah. and they blow it up. It's the same fucking ending. <laughs> He thought no one read Desperation so long they wouldn't notice. <laughs> yeah, he was, like nobody's read that. He book was book. truly desperate. Har, 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 <laughs> har, har, har. That was so hysterical. Oh, thank you. you Do you see, see the jokes you miss out on, Betty, when you don't come on the show? Yeah. Oh, that was a repeat of a joke, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I just I just played a clip from the old episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to have missed it. This yeah. is actually a clip ep- clip show. A clip show? Do you recall that time when... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how many... Um, um, who had read The Breathing Method before the most recent read for this episode? I cannot say that I have. I never have before. Yeah, neither did I. I think I've read it actually at least twice before. Like, I've gone through different seasons a couple times, so I, I have read it. It's been wow. a while, though. Probably a, lot a decade has anyway. A decade. Gwenny's button box is now out. A lot has changed. <laughs> I like to think of things. As yeah, like, like, like before, before that, it was always Gwenny's pre and post nine eleven, but now it's pre and post <laughs> Gwenny's button box. <laughs> I mean, what what was the what was the the great old uh, disaster right. to the universe? Come on, it's got to be Gwenny. I mean, that affected one city, but this book came all over the place. <laughs> This, bo- this book just ruined Castle Rock forever. Did I tell you about the guy who uh, I offended with a 9-11 joke? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell it anyway. <laughs> we were getting a bookcase delivered to us. And the guy, he uh, he stacks up both of the bookcases side by side. And he's like, ah, it looks just like the twin towels. And I, and I said, well, let's hope they don't fall down. <laughs> he just looked at me and said, I'm from 9-11. That's not fun. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's from 9-11. 9-11 is now a place. Huh? I'm from New York. That's 9/11. not funny. And I was like, it was strange Why way to describe to that. Yeah, it, it was. And then I went to the bathroom and just hid. <laughs> what are you supposed to say to that? Yeah. Go- so what? What are you? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that's 9/11. Okay. Well, I gotta take a shit. He's I'll from the street. Nine eleven. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So I I've read <laughs> the three novellas in different seasons a few times actually, but not the breathing method, and I have no idea why. I think by the time like I finished the body, it was like, well, this is a good ending to the book, and. You just never finished. Maybe it had to do with the fact that it wasn't a film yeah. adaptation. And when I was a it's, kid, yeah, it's I like was the like, the only one that's not a film adaptation, right? Yeah, it's the only one yeah. in the whole collection because you have Shawshank, you have At Pupil, and The Body. And right. Those all classic and, films right, as well. All, all three of them, great, great films. Yeah, I don't feel the breathing method. No. It's definitely really different. I mean, it's a very strong all. story, but it's definitely different than the other three. It's got a different tone. I gotta admit, I love it a lot. Oh, yeah? That oh, was very good. Yeah. I'm not doubting that. What, what you, you, not you, Betty? I like it. Yeah, I do like it. I don't know if I would say I love it, but I like it. The um, imagery at the end is so... It had me dying of laughter. Yeah, it was... Yeah. <laughs> I think but we'll my get to thing that. is, like, it's one of these, um, like, the club kind of stories with a bunch of older men that hang out. At, like, and it's a very tired trope now, but at the time it was written, it probably wasn't. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. That, it's yeah. um, it's dedicated to Peter Straub, which makes sense because that's how his one novel, Ghost Story, is. Mm-hmm. All these people sitting around telling spooky tales. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's a really well-written one of that kind of story, but I just, I don't know. I mean, it was written in the 80s, so it just doesn't hit the same chord in me, I guess. I feel like this should have bookended the collection. I think, like, the stories, these uh, old fucks tell, like, they, that should have been the, the individual novellas in the book. Right. It would make a lot of sense if this was bookending it. That would have been, that would have been cool. Yeah, it definitely. Um, And there was, there's another story I read on Wikipedia that he wrote with this group this old club or whatever i think it was in skeleton Mm -hmm. crew yeah the man who wouldn't shake hands right right do you recall that one too well um i vague i remember it it's been years since i've read it but i do remember it if i recall it's basically just like this guy going around shaking hands and then they just die of a heart attack yeah he has some kind of curse that whoever he touches will just die really quick and he gets 
he tries to live his normal life just wearing gloves and not touching people, I guess. But then every now and then someone will get touched and he gets upset. <laughs> I don't know. I think at the end he. I think at the end he kills himself by touching his little hand. Yes. Like well, so, he's never washed his hands before. Or what? He's a little jacked off. Come on. He's never taken a shower. <laughs> that guy died like that well, day. Just hand to hand contact. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Doctors say Doctor. avoid hand to hand contact. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now we know why. He made some hints in this one to like other story because they're all the the old men always tell stories, but on Christmas Eve they tell their uncanny stories. So in this one they kind of hinted at a couple other stories that were told, but he didn't tell them, and I wanted to know them, and it made me mad a little. Right. Yes, he keeps teasing us. I wrote down like minimal descriptions of these things they were telling, but before we skip ahead, let's go from the beginning. <gasps> Okay, what? so this, do we know this guy's name, the guy telling it? I don't think we ever find out. Okay, so They may have mentioned it at one point in the time. The he, He's just the narrator, yeah. He's uh, he's 73. Is he? Which is, he? yeah, yes. he's insanely old. I, I I hope I'm Neville that old. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That'd be awful. He, uh, he built out a law film doing, I don't know, law stuff. Yeah, he's kind of like, I think he does all the paperwork. I think he's really good at paperwork. What a piece of shit. Why is that making him a piece come of on. shit? He's got he, a decent job. Come Get on. Him. He's 73. Well, he's I don't, still doing this. I, I think when he's, he, he needs is a respectable now, job. I think he's looking back on when he was just yeah. doing paperwork. It's a, class, so, it's a classic king. Yeah, because king look can't back. tell a story yeah. in like present day. He always has to do it as a look back. His fiction is really much like a, a Russian nesting doll. Yes. Yeah, this one for sure. A story within a story within a yeah. story. So he's uh he's staying late one night and his boss just like walks into his office and he's thinking, ah oh, shit, I'm about to get like reprimanded for something I've right. done wrong. But he's just standing around awkwardly. Then he goes, Well, okay, have a good night and he stops. He slowly tilts back to the nail riddle. He's like, hey, so I belong to a, a type of club. He invites him to be his guest. But, like, not once does it enter this dude's mind that he's being invited to some type of creepy sex thing. It, w- it was the 80s. Now it would be my first instinct. <laughs> Anytime anyone asks me to do anything, I'm like, this is going to be a creepy sex thing, isn't it? <laughs> well, when, did, when did Eyes Wide Shut come out? That because was, like, 90s. That's what I'm thinking. That was a good movie. But, yeah, yeah, it is. Very unusual. But I mean, if anyone ever invites uh, yeah, me, yeah, no, I know. It's, 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 an it's eyes like, wide am I going to be putting my keys in a bowl? <laughs> but I think about it. Not only was this written in '82, but I mean, he's been invited to this thing back like in the '60s or '70s, and I think that was before that became. Like a more mainstream uh, It was before idea. sex was invented, actually. Probably. <laughs> I thought swingers were a pretty big thing in the 60s. They may have been. Now you're thinking of swing dancing. I am. Swing <laughs> 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 uh, I know King wrote this directly after finishing Cujo. Really? Very interesting. Yeah. Story. I don't know what that has to do with anything. It has nothing to do with anything. That was a bit of trivia I saw. Yeah. What's with the fact that every time he says, like, when this is taking place, 1970 something, he blocks it out with a hyphen. I think it's to say the narrator can't remember the exact date. It was like in the 1970, like something or other. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was kind of like a stylistic thing. Because didn't they, like, old Lovecraft stories and, like, older horror do that? I have never read Lovecraft. I think it's a thing, but I might be lying. Okay. You'll never know. Because I don't know. I <laughs> I just took it as to mean he couldn't remember the exact year it took place, but it was like 1970-something. I was thinking perhaps he was he was hiding the exact date like for confidential reasons. Um, yeah. But then like we finish it up and there's no real explanation for why he was blocking out the date. Yeah. But it's like if you can't remember the exact date, man, how are you re- recalling all the rest of these trivial details? Well, you know. How are you coming up with this strange sample of what was that fucking book his wife just began reading to him for oh, no reason? Yeah, the yeah. The passage that wasn't even that good of a passage. Like I don't even understand that bit. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a book. 
Yeah. But what I was it? I don't know. The long. Journey. Oh, it was a long. It was a uh, the long goodbye. By, oh, the long goodbye. Uh, that's it. Raymond Chandler. It made no like why why is this in this novella? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Stephen King must just been reading it at the time and liked that passage. <laughs> He's I like, "Oh, so. you know, I'm just gonna stick this in here." <laughs> no, I've never read that book, but the movie is excellent. Him and his wife yes. always say "oink oink" to each other, and I don't understand it. Did either of you guys get it? I don't, I don't know. She well, she was calling him a male chauvinist pig. Yeah. Oink oink. <laughs> oh. Because she, he's like, hey, I got invited to this strange sex club, honey. <laughs> and she's like, well, go have fun at your... Um, at your boys club, show you yeah, shoving this pig. You fucking pig, you piece of shit. Get out of my house. <laughs> huh. There's a lot of subtext there, isn't there? <laughs> yes. And he gets in this cab, and this dude does not want to fucking tip. Because he begins just like, ha ha, look at all these winos. They're going to freeze to death overnight. Less well feel, huh? And, like, the Neil Riddles, it's like, dude, what the fuck? These little human lives you're joking about. <laughs> right. And the taxi driver's like, what all you, one of those bleeding hot liberals? You fucking liberal, you. You fucking cuck. And, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. And then there's a cab driver later, but I don't see any particular relations there. Maybe no. it's the same cab driver. Maybe. I don't think so, though. Ooh. Maybe it's his son. Whoa. John Jr. <laughs> John Jr. <laughs> I just, like, you can't talk to someone like that and expect to get a tip. <laughs> well, you know, especially in a public service industry, I mean, you really don't know what people believe. It's like, why would you act that way? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I want to be a taxi driver now, though. I think it'd be fun. You could be, be an Uber driver. driver. I'm, I'm extremely bad with directions, though, so I don't know yeah, how no. well it would go. He would get lost. Mm-hmm. I got lost driving home the other day. Did you have to call for yeah. help? Almost. But I, I just kept going until I found something familial. <laughs> that still doesn't beat the time he called me at three in the morning lost on the way home from Dallas. Uh, yes, that's what I'm I don't know where I'm at. I was <laughs> like, what do you expect me I was to know? Still I was like, help. <laughs> Hack into my phone. I still don't know how in the hell I managed to help you home. <laughs> you told me to go down one road and I know, I'm driving, I, and then I had a slap on the brakes because I the road still, wasn't even built. It still was just don't know a big how I ditch. figured out where you were. You. It was kind of like Dolan's Cadillac, actually, was the plan. Oh, but you... shit. I do drive a Cadillac. Like, not? Really? <laughs> I'm, trying, <laughs> I'm trying to impress <laughs> Betty. <laughs> he drives a Hyundai. <laughs> If you named, if you named like five different vehicle vehicles, I would not know what they looked like. Oh God, no. me neither. I only know what mine looks like because I have it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't even know what a Cadillac looks like, and I saw that movie. It's a long car. I picture My parents a, red, a Cadillac. I think it's just a, a Cadillac means a red car. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also says how okay, so. The Nil Radel, he's been coming to this fucking club for ten yields. And one of the original found olds, this this what is he, a butler? He's like a butler almost, yeah. Like he's just natural butler. They hint. Yeah, he's just there to tend to people's needs. I mean, he's the one that makes the drinks and <laughs> he's takes people's coats. everybody up. Yeah, right. And there, there's a big needs. like um there's lots of little hints that something spooky goes on at this club too, that like it's not like a, a real club in the real world or something or there's like weird sounds from upstairs liquid thumps whatever that would possibly sound like yeah. he makes a comment how one time i debated going up stills but then i held a bump and i never did it yeah like why would a bump just scare yeah i you wouldn't off? be like okay like, there's a bump oh yeah. man a coat rack fell <laughs> and he gets the sense that he shouldn't ask too many questions about the club a lot Right, well, because he starts by asking questions, and he just gets the look, you know, like, you better not ask this question. I think he's just pale annoyed. Maybe. And there's all these books there that are, like, authors that don't really exist, or poems by authors that weren't written, and all this kind of... He's even going to the library and looking up these publishers, and the the librarian's like, dude, get away. Right, right, these publishers don't exist. It's this magical building... He's saying the the butt little guy is older than he really looks. Much, much older, he emphasizes. Right. Well, he also emphasizes the fact that this guy never ages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the 10 years that he's gone there, he's never gotten any he's older. he's like a vampire? Maybe. Well, like, how much older does, like, a 75-year-old look than a 
65 year old yeah i don't know who knows i guess yeah there would be some aging in that time it's like in the green mile when he uh he tells that the woman that he's 105 right. and she's like what you don't look any older than 85 <laughs> yes <laughs> what's the difference <laughs> Yeah, but my favorite book that's in the uh, case of books is 20 Cases of Dismemberment oh. and Their Outcomes yeah. by British Law. I want to read that book really bad. Only 20 cases. <laughs> Only. <laughs> Do you think it's like a picture book? I don't know. Fully illustrated? A fully illustrated book of a dismemberment. Pop-up <laughs> <laughs> a pop-up book? A pop-out book. Head cases? A scholarly tome dealing with like... House cats that inherited great sums of money to an awesome. Yes, the, the pet law book. <laughs> yeah, like I guess it would be like when a uh, cat sues somebody. Mm-hmm. Cat sue? Yeah. A cat named Sue? No, that, that's not funny. Oh. <laughs> it's when a cat sues somebody. <laughs> But okay, so, I mean, what is this group, really, besides a bunch of goddamn nulls just sitting around telling stories? Yeah, so I, that's like that's all it is. We're supposed to feel like there's something bigger going on, but I definitely don't have any hints to what that could be. It's just a bunch of men telling stories. Yeah, it's like, okay, they have a magical setting that they're, like, doing this in, but they're not doing anything. They're, yeah, they're all just kind of sitting around reading their own thing. They're just getting drinking. drunk, reading poetry. Hanging yeah. out in this spooky land between worlds or whatever. Like, it, it's... What a bunch of fucking losels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, explore the rest. Yes. I don't know. I mean, just walk he, around. He would go in the library. You know he'd be in the I would the also the probably be doing time. the same yeah. thing. But then I know there's a billiards room that they go play pool in i wouldn't do that i i cannot play no i know but then at the crux of the evening is they all gather around the fireplace and somebody tells a story <laughs> i imagine like the the the, the story tells like in this rocking chill and everyone else all these old men are, like sitting on <laughs> the ground like uh, <laughs> like Indian up style yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny is i got some sort of similar image <laughs> and that first one was about a man who drowned in a telephone booth Yes. Why are we not, like, finding out the rest of this? Like, just give me a summation of it, and I would feel a lot happier. Like, it doesn't have to be an entire short story, but... Uh... Tell us how he drowned. How, I mean, how, would you, how do you think someone could drown in a telephone booth? I was picturing somehow, since they say they should have saved it for Christmas, it makes me feel that there's something uncanny going on there. So I'm just picturing a phone booth... That's cursed. That fills up with water on a guy while he's on the phone. Is what I maybe like a like a depressed telephone booth who keeps crying. <laughs> maybe. maybe, but wouldn't I mean to me? It's like wouldn't it leak out from somewhere? I know telephone booths aren't airtight for crying out no, loud. Came in fast enough. Maybe. maybe I don't know. Maybe it's puddle he fell in because he was drunk. Like I don't know. Maybe the telephone booth's unrelated. Like he just has. He was just, you know, yeah. if he got pushed in the ocean or something. That could be. Oh, he was in a telephone booth that got thrown into the ocean. I like that. Yeah, see? Okay, okay. And the, and the second one, which I love, is a, <laughs> is a teacher who is using the uh, pilda potty toilet and the ass gets stuck in the toilet. <laughs> and the truck comes and lifts the pilda potty up and drives away with it. And as they're driving, the... Was it the doll just flies off the hinges? Yeah, something like as, that. As she's on the highway. What? And you'll notice what? that he told the whole story of that one. Stephen King went ahead Pretty and much. was like, everybody who's reading this needs to know the whole situation here. But the other ones, I'm just going to hate that. <laughs> but the, the but teacher trying to use the bathroom. <laughs> I gotta. I know, but my favorite thing is she didn't make any noise when they were loading it up on the truck because she was too polite. <laughs> <laughs> you know what <it> like. <laughs> I would have screamed my head off. I'm stuck in the toilet. <laughs> to be honest, if I was stuck in a toilet, I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> I would be so embarrassed. I, I, I really want to know how your ass gets stuck in a toilet. I don't know. I mean, it seems. I want to know difficult. why the door blows off. Yeah, I don't what know. What kind of fucking pull, shady pull the potty business is this? <laughs> and also, I. I'm convinced Kim's written something like this before. I think it was in Just After Sunset, right? Oh. Well, someone's in the pool to potty, like it tips over. Yeah, that sounds familiar. That. Is it called The End of the Whole Mess? Is that the one? Might be. That's a title he's it's written, but I don't know title, if that's the yeah, one. Sure. I, w- <laughs> I once uh, got trapped in the bathroom. Did that you? That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I was, uh, I was living... 
in the when I, when I when I moved to Texas originally, I was living in this shitty house, but I had a key to a real estate office that I would go to and use the bathroom because I didn't feel too comfortable doing it at this house with like eight other guys around. So one afternoon, I went to the, the office. It was supposed to be closed because it was a weekend. And I'm in the bathroom just sitting down, you know, doing what people do. And all of a sudden, the dull, the dull like, rings because someone has walked into the office. And I'm not supposed to be in this place. They don't know who I am. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit. And I mean, I can't. I mean, I've already done what I, what I set to do, but I hadn't fleshed it yet. So <laughs> I'm just sitting there, and the smell is rising, and just as someone's walking around the office, they begin to vacuum. Awesome. I'm stuck for like a half hour because I, the, the door isn't locked at all, so they could just walk in at any moment. But eventually, <laughs> they left. I mean, the similar. <laughs> is it similar? <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty similar. Yeah, I think so. I mean, has have any of you ever been trapped in the bathroom? I have a really vague memory of being a kid with my mom, and we were staying with someone, and we got stuck in the bathroom, and I don't know. Yes, I have been, Max, and I have no interesting details about it for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, that's disappointing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Would you like me to make something up about it? Yes, please. And then... Um, a bunch of people came and there was a party and they were all trying to get in the bathroom and the house fell apart. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got nothing. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so at Christmas time, they all have to tip the Stevens, right? Yeah. Well, they don't have to tip him, but it's kind of like a, you don't want to be the only one not tipping Stevens. What is he doing with this money? Is he, is he, is he paying rent? I don't know. That's a really... So you're replenishing I, I the brandy? It's almost just, like, symbolic. Because, yeah, what the hell? Stevens is creepy butler who lives in this creepy place uh, in between worlds. What does he need money for? Can he be a butler if he doesn't have, like, an employer? Like, who is he looking know. for? The oh, house? Mr. Body. Oh, no, that's a clue. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, at one point, one of the, someone tips him a thousand dollar bill. Is that... Was Either. that ever a thing? Yeah, it was. Why? I don't know. For if you need a thousand dollar bills floating around here, okay. I can't imagine why, but you know. We've thrown off Betty, who is uh, <laughs> used to Canadian monies. Yeah, our money is much different. We don't even our money doesn't even go up to a thousand here. I don't think it does now anymore, but it used it's to. It's not worth enough to ever reach a thousand dollars. What kind in of Canada? What do you, what, All what do you have? Canada has it's like what ones, fives, what? They're the same currencies we do. What? Ones, fives, tens, twenties. Why is it different then? It just is. It's just not worth as much because people in the United States are worth a lot more than we are. Our <laughs> lives are lessened. Eat shit, Betty. I know. Well, the one thing I like about Canadian money is it's different colors. <laughs> <laughs> it's still different colors, right? And... I mean, does anyone ever see real money anymore? No, I know, it is true. Doesn't do it. it smell like money maple syrup? a number <laughs> on the internet that I somehow own. Uh, I only invest in Bitcoin now. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but that way you know if you're grabbing a $10 bill or a $20 bill because it's different colors. Whereas here, it's all yeah. green. <laughs> just look at the number. I, I know that, but I'm just saying <laughs> you instantly know. Max. I can't tell numbers apart. Oh, okay. Come on now. Okay, so we get to the main, we get to the breathing method, right? Which is this one guy's spooky Christmas tale, right? And this guy's never told a tale at this place before. What an so asshole! So everybody's like excited. It's like it should be. I think the Neil Riddle should have told one too. It should be like Fight Club. You come in, you have to tell something. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just like, hey man, all looking and I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you need to you need to participate. You can't just watch. Yes. One of the stories that was that they told that he didn't fill in sounded like the most interesting to me. It was oh, like yes. someone came running in full of blood and then He's like, uh I, I, I found something at my cabin and I couldn't kill it. Now it's in my trunk. Yeah, but it was a guy that was yeah, gonna like become president. In my car, <laughs> something I found out at the Virginia place. I've shot it and stabbed it and I can't kill it. It's not human and I can't kill it. And then later the narrator has nightmares and screams out in bed. His head, his head is still speaking in the earth. 
Like, come on, what the fuck happened there? Yeah. <laughs> His wife reacts way too calmly to all of that. Mm. I mean, she should be stabbing her husband it's to it. death. If you you shout can't have them. a spouse who shouts something about heads laughing in the ground. I, if you actually, if you just sat up and shouted that, I'd be like, oh, okay, he has his next story inspiration. So it probably wouldn't mean much to me. <laughs> Do you take a lot of stories from dreams, Matt? No. Uh, I don't know. Usually when I wake up and scream something about heads shouting in the ground, I've just had like a crazy erotic dream. <laughs> Anytime I think of a decapitated head, I think of that that, that amazing scene in Reanimatal. Oh yeah, the, the the head scene. The head scene. Have you seen that movie? I can't say that I have. I'm sorry. Oh, you I'm shouldn't. lame. That's an, an amazing Did movie. All of them are. Were there two or three? I don't remember now. I don't know. I don't I remember. Like I don't read Lovecraft. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know they made a sequel. Yeah, I, re- I think I like the sequel. Same guy? Like, same, like, director and cast? Oh, yeah. There were three. Um, the reanimator, Bride Reanimator in 89. Jeffrey Combs is still in it. Wow. Um, I don't know if it's the same director. Brian Yuzna? I don't know who, who made did it. The first I, don't, one. I don't know. <laughs> no, Robert Gordon did the first one, so it was someone different on the second one, and the same guy did the second and third. I think the third wasn't as good, but I, I liked the second one. Is the second one The Bride? Yeah. What's the last one called? Uh, Beyond Reanimator. Oh, that's dumb. <laughs> and then there was another one in the same universe, kind of, wasn't there? From Beyond or something? It had a lot of the same actors, and it was Stuart Gordon, too, I think. Hmm. Yeah, it had all the same people, and it was a Lovecraft. Oh. Wow. Yeah, you should watch From Beyond. I will check it out, maybe. Maybe. Well, I feel like you're not going to. <laughs> so, see, does he reanimate like a bride? This is basically basically just Frankenstein? I don't Is that the plot remember. we're going with? Like, oh, I need Let's someone to yeah. love. Okay. I don't remember, but I'm going to say yeah. It's exactly the same. All right, so we get to the, the spooky Christmas tale, which is <laughs> called The Breathing Method. Right. And The Breathing Method is just the way you breathe. It's a method you breathe as you... It's, like it's Lamaze breathing. Lamaze, yeah. The, they just called it The Breathing Method. The, be- that the way, be- Omnibus. I telling this story in the early 1900s. The, the, it wasn't common at all, and it was thought of as like folk magic or something yeah i mean so okay so like before this happened how how are people breathing are they just like shut up don't move yeah no i mean basically women weren't giving you the breathing method is supposed to calm you down and help deliver the baby well before that they would just medicate the shit out of you and you'd scream your head off to deliver this kid so yeah yeah. so more babies were being delivered stillborn more women were dying during the thing because of the they perceived pain and the uh, fact that they weren't getting enough oxygen and then they weren't getting enough oxygen stretched. to their children. You know, people used to deliver babies by just crouching. True. Is Do this you baby? know why they, uh, they, they changed it up to be laying down? So the baby didn't fall on their head, probably. Do you, no. Do you know, Betty? Do you know what changed the, the um, delivery? Easier for doctors. No. Um, in the 1600s, King Louis the 14th had 22 kids, and he loved watching his wife deliver babies. It was like a like a fetish. Well, he, he had 22 he, of them, so... He, he would get pissed because when she was standing, the view was shitty. So she would, he would begin <laughs> making a lay down. Oh my god. This is interesting. complete truth. Very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he was a king after all. Yeah, he was Name actually one a, good king. He was, yeah, I was actually a really good king, so... <laughs> <laughs> now we know where you stand. Well, I mean, we know where you lay. Where you lay. <laughs> <laughs> Giving birth sounds horrible to me. Like, I've never done it, and I never will. And it's disgusting and unnatural. No one should have babies. Despite the fact that I have two kids, I did not give birth either, so... You just found them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had cesarean both times. We found them in, like, some house with a family in it? I don't know. <laughs> No one was like, no one was attending to him. <laughs> we were just like, ah, two kids, let's take them. Uh, find those keepers. 
Isn't that another Stephen King book? Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens in that book. This oh, guy, okay. he finds babies. He's like, well, I guess he's mine now. <laughs> you will read that fuck that the fucking book uh blaze with the mentally disabled like man who yeah. steals a baby is great it's a good one yeah. we need to do that as an episode already didn't that was a bachman it was right? a lost bachman found yeah. like a decade after he died oh king was cleaning out his closet he's like oh man look at this book that ba- bachman left behind he Surprise. actually talks about that in the afterword of this one i think maybe i don't know yeah I remember, um, after his debut novel came out, he had a choice between Salem's Lot and Blaze. He went with Salem's Lot. Mm-hmm. Probably the correct decision. Probably so. I would say, yeah. Blaze was good, but after Carrie, Salem's Lot kind of solidified him into who he is, I think. Yeah. Okay, so, the breathing method. <laughs> we will get there eventually. All right. <laughs> Uh, so the story is, is it's back like in 1935 and he's like this young doctor. Yeah. And he, yeah, he, he del- delivers babies and this likes, woman comes in, I know the name jo- Jane Smith. Yes. Cause that's not a pseudonym for anything. And he goes through a great strides to describe how official and business like she is. She's straight to the point. Right. But the real name is Sandra Stansfield. Um, oh, he's very impressed with how, like, composed she is for, like, a young single woman. Like, she's very sure of herself. Right. Yes. And uh, he go. Um, so this is a big controversy because, oh, man, she's pregnant. And she's, she's not unmarried. married. Yeah. And it's like, pff, I'm, no one's going to treat this young woman Right. I mean, I don't know how true that would have been. Like, do you think, like, oh, hospitals yeah, just, just like, no, go die in the woods? Pretty much. <laughs> I, I really think it was that way, yeah. That's crazy. It is, but I mean, that's... Well, I mean, think about it. America's not that much difference now. If you don't have the money, you can just go die in the woods. Yeah, go die in the woods. America sure is something. It, it is something. sure is something. Well, I mean, you can still go to the emergency room. You yeah. Just, you just get, like, yelled at. When you when they go, okay, how much are you going to be paying now? And yeah, you go, uh, nothing. nothing yeah. And they go, whoa, what? What? Next time you're going to pay up front. Yeah, we have this. It's un- like that whole, um, I'll pay you today. For, well, I'll, I'll pay, pay you Tuesday for, for a hand for handle today. Yeah. It's really much like that. We do pay hospitals with uh, meat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know that, but... um. It's helpful. No, but I mean, this one hospital by us, we went and I had the flu so bad, they had to give me fluids. And afterwards, <laughs> That's was... what you do when you have the flu. No, you get a fluid. No, her, her. <laughs> but anyway, we go to leave and I couldn't pay anything, you know? I mean, I don't mind paying a little bit. I mean, we have, just... a, we have a podcast. What, what do, you, do you think <laughs> we can like, pay? I'm like, lady, I have, you know, I'm in the emergency room for a reason. If I had the money, don't you think I would have just gone to the doctor, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And she's like, oh, well, next time we're going to collect from you up front. And I thought... Well, you're a hospital. You have to take me no matter what. You know? It's so fucked up the way they it, do It's, it's extraordinarily... It's it really is. And then this last time when I thought I broke my foot, we went in. They were very helpful. And they were trying to give me resources to go find... It would help pay for my bills and stuff. Oh, my God. That's but, I mean, it's like... what? Yeah. It, it was much better. But I thought, you know... Why do I... It's just wrong to me. I fell, you know, and possibly broke my foot. Hospitals are crazy because, like... It's probably the only business where they refuse to tell you how much you have to pay until after you receive the product. Yeah. Because, like, if he went up front and said, hey, I need to have these done, how much is it going to be? They'll just be like, well, we'll find out after you're done. Right. Well, and it's oh, like, well. the doctor looked at me for, like, five minutes. I never made it into a room. He's like, ah, your foot's not broken. I saw him for, what, three minutes, five minutes maybe? Yeah. And I got his bill. It was like $1,000. I'm like, dude, you're not <laughs> worth that much. You didn't even look at my foot that long. You didn't tell me what to do. You didn't tell me what could be wrong. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know a guy who got stabbed in the leg. And he, an ambulance came and took him to the hospital. And he was charged $8,000 for the ambulance Christ. ride. He was That's stabbed in the leg. Like it just—it's enough money to ruin people's lives completely. Oh, yeah, for like a small illness, it's crazy. Like healthcare here in my specific part of Canada isn't great because we don't have a lot of doctors around here, and there's a lot of issues in that way. But um, at least it's free. Do you yeah. just have like one doctor? 
Yeah, there's just one doctor he... for all in Nova Scotia, so it, you know, there's a bit <laughs> of a Does he make house calls? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, right now, uh, we have a big mental health crisis around here right now. We're supposed to have 16 psychiatrists on duty, and we have four. What happened oh, to wow. the rest? Did they go crazy? <laughs> Probably. They're all... They've all been killed. <laughs> serial killer. <laughs> I think I saw something about that on the news. Yeah. Yeah. You did. Okay. So he uh, he gives this woman a pamphlet that he wrote himself. Right. That basically talks about what to do while pregnant, what to expect while expecting. Yes. And there's a big section that she's reading that says, yeah, you know, some people will say it's okay to smoke. But you should not smoke no matter what. And as she's reading it, he goes, hey, do you mind if I smoke my pipe right now? <laughs> no, that cracked me up. <laughs> he just it's lights up. You don't smoke, it's fine. Secondhand smoke doesn't exist yet. Just blowing it in the face. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, you have the baby, huh? <laughs> and then after this, he goes, okay, now I'm going to frighten you. And she's like looking at him like, what the fuck? And he, what is he? I forget what he does. Well, because she's working. She's working okay, to support yeah. herself. And then she knows as soon as she begins to show, she's going to be fired because proper society won't allow a single woman to be pregnant. Of course not. That's So hideous. he's saying, I had a woman once who wore like a girdle and a corset for a long time to keep herself from showing and the baby came out retarded. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, it might have been retarded anyway. Yeah. But. Well, he says that too. He says it may not, you know, it may have been that. But he says, don't, don't, no matter what, please don't do that, you know. Yeah, but I imagine when he said, okay, I'm going to frighten you now, he would just, like, turn around and jump back with a mask on or something. Whoa. <laughs> but yeah, she gets, she's really interested in the breathing method thing because it's like self hypnosis. Right. Like she just thinks cool and she's uniquely suited to it he thinks like she's good at it well if the thing is she's got no other family to tell her hey that's bullshit and because that's why the breathing method doesn't seem to work for most women is because their mom goes that's a bunch of malarkey you just gotta scream and push you know oh there's a big description i think it's about two pages just about like how labor goes and what labor's like and the different stages to it and stuff it's all very disgusting to me <laughs> yes I don't, I don't recall I that section at all. I think yeah. I might have glazed over. Well, it talks about how when a woman's six months pregnant, your contractions actually start, but you don't really feel them. But when they get to be like 15 minutes apart and you dilate, yeah. then the baby comes out. And... Gross. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. even have a baby. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then she gets fired from her job and she uses the breathing method to stay calm. Right. Yeah, that because she, uh, she doesn't have a ring on, so she's let go. And, like, uh, the boss brings her into the office and she is disgusted. She's like, I can't believe I brought you home for dinner. Do I have boys who live with me? <laughs> I know, it's like, what? Like, she was gonna fuck her children. <laughs> yeah. Well, a woman with loose morals like that, you never know. She should have been like, who do you think the dad is? <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> so she buys like a two dollar wedding ring at a pawn shop to right. avoid future incidents. So what's the inflation on that? I really have no idea. Oh. I'll look it up. I love looking up stuff like this. It was two dollars and nineteen. What year was this? Thirty five, I think. Yeah. yeah. Thirty five dollars. Thirty five. Thirty five bucks. That's still not that oh, bad. A little rich lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's how much it was. Alrighty. She has her fake wedding ring, and, so she's all set. And the doctor's like all mad. Like, how you shouldn't deceive people, you lying bitch. She never says that. <laughs> but I mean, it's basically how he's acting. Yeah. He's like, and maybe I would have fallen in love with her that day if she hadn't shook my hand with a lying <laughs> finger. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what are you talking about, man? She just lost her job because of this. Right. What do you want to do? And she's getting ready to lose her apartment. (laughs) Oh, and then he gets, like, a bunch of premonitions about uh, her being doomed or whatever. She tells him she feels doomed. Right. And then he has a dream about her head being... She's carrying her head and saying she's doomed. Yeah. King loves those uh, dream sequences for, like, oh, this is what's going to happen at the end. 
Yes. Yeah, that's a very direct symbolism <laughs> one. Like, he's not hinting at it like the way a dream is. It's just directly, my head's off, I'm doomed, what could possibly happen? Have you ever had a dream that came true like that? Um, yes. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so she's going to the label, and she uh, calls the doctor. She's like, hey, I'm on my way. Baby's happening. Right. He's like, okay, I guess I'll walk to the hospital. Oh, and it's Christmas Eve that it happened. Christmas right. Eve. Christmas yes, Eve. that's why we're doing this um, novella right now, because it's almost Christmas. <gasps> what? He doesn't have a lot of Christmas stories. This is one of them. Wow. Yeah. You're so spiffy. So she gets into a cab. They'll drive into the hospital, and she's doing the breathing method, and it's real. And it makes- it's pissing off this caddy right. so much. He's so super nervous. He doesn't like that she's not yelling and that she's breathing. All right. Well, he says, you know, I kept looking at her to make sure she wasn't dying or something because the way she's breathing, it sounds like she's passing out, basically. Well, he said it in a really funny way. Yeah. He kept looking in the rearview mirror to see if she was dying or something. And it's spelled D-I-N-E. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dying, dying or something. Dying. something. Yeah, and he, the doctor noticed, oh, I mean, the driver noticed the change in the way she was breathing. She started panting like a dog on a hot day, Doc. <laughs> She'd be- <laughs> Mind you, he's saying this after she was decapitated. Right. <laughs> That's his language. <laughs> but yeah, she's decapitated. They wreck the cab, and she flies out of the vehicle, and something cuts her head off. Is it the, the cab itself? Well, yeah, it's like the cab last. Yeah, the cab hits the ambulance, which hits the statue and rebounds and hits the cab again. <laughs> the cab is, like, torn in half, and the glass shatters, and it decapitates her somehow. I just love visualizing this body bouncing around all these objects. <laughs> and then he he's... I mean, there's a part here... Maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But he says something about a head. He packed forceps in his bag that night. Yeah. Oh, yes. And- like, he never used to use them because, <laughs> I know. not since I'd seen a doctor I will not name, punch through a newborn's temple and into the child's brain with one of those infernal gadgets. The child died instantly. The corpse was lost. And when what went on the death certificate was stillborn. Right. I, Mike, I had that exact comment followed by the word ha a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> like that, I had to put the book down for a minute when I read that and just like really think, like it just really got into me. I don't know. I mean, Fucking can you cool. imagine that shit. happening on the job? It's like, okay, squeeze and pull. Oh, fuck. But, I, you know, right? it makes it's me cool. want to look it up because I wonder if that happens more often than like it's ever admitted to. Yeah, they said the I mean, body they don't, was lost. Yeah, I mean, they don't use forceps now. Yeah, that but, I can think I, of. All I could picture was like the look on the doctor's face like, when he realized oh, he did that. Like <laughs> yeah. I could picture how gray you would go, and all the blood would drain. Like I could picture it so well. <laughs> like oh shit. I mean, oh he's dead. <laughs> Sorry, he was already dead. I gotta go. Oh, it turns out you weren't pregnant after all. <laughs> <laughs> you just like kick it into a trash bin. Like throw this out. Throw it out. Throw it out. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> Terrible. Oh god damn, I laugh so yeah, much. So her head's off and he rushes over. He trips on the they... head. Yeah. Which is an image. <laughs> and he can see her still breathing right. and the baby just the baby crown. So he can just somehow just see the baby coming out of her vagina, I guess. Well he okay. cuts open the underwear with his picture scalpel. Picture this scene. A cab crashes, a woman flies out, she's decapitated, a man rushes over to the woman and lifts up her skull and cuts through the panties. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she's very... Uh, it's obviously pregnant. she's pregnant. <laughs> okay, but, I mean, still. Yeah. It's kind of a funny, yeah. it's kind of a funny thought. But yeah, she, she gets the baby out because it's, the she's breathing, still breathing is continuing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah keeps doing the lamas and the baby comes out and the, then we never really see it again the baby shoots out is how he describes right, it which, he does not come out he yeah. shoots out like a bullet which does happen to be fair and she, he's yelling at the nulls to uh to get a blanket he's like move your ass you bitch <laughs> I know, but it's like he's he transported her, like he's in the war yeah it's yeah. like he thinks he, like he's in a war because yeah. he keeps calling her Sarge yeah, yeah. It's like one of the attendants, he takes one look at what's going on and just runs away and he says, no one ever saw him again. <laughs> Where did he go? <laughs> and the 
the ambulance driver takes a look at it, begins to pray, and then faints. Yeah, well, you know. Proudly pees his pants, if I had to assume. <laughs> I know there was no <laughs> peeing in the story. I feel very left out. I mean, I assume the woman peed when oh, she maybe. was maybe. decapitated. Maybe. Supposedly you do when you give birth. I don't know. Supposedly you do when you're decapitated. The baby, and then he goes and picks up her head, and it's still alive. Right. He's looking at us. And he's like, it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the, the head opens its mouth, and behind yeah. him, the vocals inside the body goes off and says, like, what, thank, thank you? Thank you, doctor, whatever his it's name like was. It's like a fucking ventriloquist head. Yes. <laughs> and then in, he can see the light going from her eyes. Hilarious. But also, the nurse is like, we feel like she's she has a blanket in her right. hands, but she won't give it to him because she goes, "What if it's a monster?" <laughs> yeah, it's like what? And he goes, "Give me that blanket now!" You feel like kick your asshole right up to your shoulder blades. <laughs> you can't talk to staff like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's war, damn it! <laughs> what if it's a monster? It's a woman without a head. Right, it's just a baby. <laughs> well, I mean, what if it is? She has a point. Oh mm-hmm. well. So does a monster not deserve a blanket? No. They would charge him $65 for that blanket. <laughs> they would. <laughs> Welcome to America, baby. <laughs> I mean, the, yeah, then just... the mom's oh, dead, so, I mean, who's getting that bill? Yeah, that, baby? that goes on the state there because the becomes, child becomes a ward of the state. And... <sighs> Crazy, right? Did he say he paid for some of it, maybe? He paid the for doctor? the um, funeral. Burial expenses. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so then he's finished his story, and everyone's like, oh, what happened to the baby? He's like, oh, the baby's fine. Don't worry about it. His name's John or something. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe he would have adopted the uh, baby. I know. I thought about baby. that, too. They're like, I'm that uh, baby. Yeah, I've been expecting him to be the baby. Yeah. <laughs> that baby is in this room. <laughs> well, I thought about that, too. Oh, and oh, well, oh it was a fucking narrator. That's what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be the narrator. That would have been yeah. cool. But it was not. <laughs> it wasn't. No, the Neil Riddle really has no purpose in the story. No, other than to be a narrator. No. But you no, know, this story those, could yeah. have been told without the whole entire house thing and still been a story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, go ahead. It would have been like a 20-minute episode instead of a 60-minute episode. Yeah, that's true. But- and yeah, and then he just asks the butler some more questions on his way out. He's like, oh, is this place spooky? And the butler's like, yeah, whatever. And then he goes home and that was about it. Oh, but yeah, that's the breathing method. I liked it a lot. It was very well written. I mean, it was. It was... I, I love King when he's just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, he was definitely just doing his own thing, and that's like whatever he wanted. Right. Okay, so we should rank it then, huh? We should. Do you... Yeah, we have to rank this. You can uh, participate, or you don't have to. It's up to you. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a look at the list, yeah. and I'll, I'll participate. Yeah. Okay. Would you quit scrolling? I can't see. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um. Do we think it's uh, better than the raft? Yes. Yeah. Really? I like the raft. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> One... Oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, if you like something, that doesn't mean something else is also good. That's true. Okay. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe. I like the end of the raft. I like the end of the breathing method more than the end of the raft. Yeah. But I like yeah. the buildup of the raft more than I do than the breathing method. Okay. Does that make sense? I yes. Agree. Okay. Yep. So, hmm. Would it... I don't know why I, s- I focus on the raft immediately. Yeah, I don't know why either. Well, I number 25. It's a good place to start, I mm-hmm. think. What do you think? I'm not sure. See, I'm having a problem with your list because I like the raft better but i sure don't like the dark half any better yeah well no one asked you about that well shit (laughs) (laughs) i know you don't like that novel but i don't know why because it's great and i think you might just need to read it again betty max you're not the boss of me and i've told you that (laughs) (laughs) okay yeah so we're better than we like it better than the raft we like the breathing method better I like the breathing method better than I like the raft. Okay. Only what because about... was, raft was just reminded me too much of like a stupid teenager story. Well, they both stupid. I know things. exactly. It reminded me too much of a raft story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like stories about rafts. Okay. Fuck rafts. <laughs> I hate. Them. It was one of the first Stephen King I ever read. It has a good, a good place in my heart. I love the background of that one. Uh, I think it's better than the tale. Maybe tales from the dark side of the movie. 
I'm trying to even remember Tales from the Dark Side. Is it's that the movie bad? where they uh, they tell tales? Oh, well, I know that, and that's the, the one doll. with the gargoyles, right? Yeah, the gargoyles. Yeah, I think it's probably better than that. Oof. Oof. It okay. might even be better than Word Processor of the Gods, but maybe not. I don't know about that. What do you think, Betty? I like Word Processor Processor of the Gods better. I okay. do too. It has a cool concept. Yeah, well, it is. I definitely agree with that. Okay, so how about between the gods and the movie? All right. Okay. Fine with that. Okay. She agrees, so, so therefore new, it's in concrete. It's a new... I'm going to redo this entire list. <laughs> the There's a lot of things I don't agree with, and I think we're going to have to fix it. We, uh, we came up with a rule that we cannot edit it once we add something, because as we go on, we'll look at the list and be like, well, maybe we were wrong about something. But, but we, we, can, we, can, uh, we, we can't, can't fix wrong, it. Like yeah. That. I uh, I agree with the top three, though. Yeah. It's a dark half and survivor type? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing will ever um, replace Gwenny's button box as the last no, one. No, not unless he writes something else that's worse. The Reaple's image. Body. The Reaple's image is the is one where this guy like buys a haunted mill and like he, he can see the Grim Reaple in it. It's a short story, like a super short story. A what? Mirror. A oh, fuck. It, it, <laughs> what, what's that one from? I don't remember now. It's like one of the mo- like original things he wrote back in the 60s 70s Squ- what's squad D? it's a vietnam tale that was never published it was rejected by holland ellison because it sucked <laughs> All right, yeah, fair yeah, yeah. and it really does suck it was bad although we, re- we uh, recently interviewed that steven spagnesi guy who wrote all those quiz books he kept talking about how much he loved squad, squad D, D and, and elevation and we will just try not, to, try not laugh. to laugh <laughs> Yeah, I saw that podcast go up. I didn't listen to it yet. Wow. Now she knows how much how, she What likes a surprise. Us. What else do you disagree with? Everything. Really? <laughs> I don't know. I just closed it down. I don't care anymore. <laughs> okay. Well, before you go, we have some questions from Patreon. From two from Thomas Joyce? Yes, we do. <laughs> okay. Question one from Thomas Joyce. Hey, Betty. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Should we wait? <laughs> Do you think Thomas will call in and answer? <laughs> <laughs> how are you? How are you managing your different creative projects, such as writing and drawing, as well as the day job and looking after the cats? Um, poorly. No, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Um, I haven't been writing really since Stevie King. My cat died a couple months ago. It kind of like shook everything up and I needed to give myself a little bit of break, but I can't take a break from my day job and I had a bunch of art commissions. So writing kind of went out the window for a bit. But um, other than that, I just, I have a to-do list every day and I put things onto it. I'm getting ready to start writing again. It's just, uh, I'm lucky that I work from home and I have a flexible schedule to kind of squeeze everything in there, but I don't get everything done every day, that's for sure. Fully understand that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I did, um, I outlined a short story last week, though, and I'm about ready to get started again. That's so good. So that is excellent. If not before Christmas, after Christmas, I'm going to write 5,000 things this year because I got them ready in my head. And that's more than most people have. Yeah. Yeah, most people don't have a head, but they can still breathe. They have can still babies. breathe. <laughs> All right, Thomas also asks, I recently heard your interview on the Ladies of Fright podcast. Everyone should go listen to that after this podcast, of course. And I was wondering which of the craft books you mentioned, self-editing for fiction writers, story physics, story engineering, and The Loving Dead, helped you the most with structuring a story? Uh, With structuring? Um, It was one of, like, because self-editing is basically just about editing and not a lot of structure. Um, fuck, I don't remember which of the two story engineering ones by Larry Brooks came first, but they're both excellent, and I think you should read both of them. They give you a lot of advice on how to make sure you have powerful points in your story and that it feels like a story, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with some more meaning than just scrawling it down on your first instinct. I do a lot of planning before I write. I like to know all my plot points before I get started. Um, I know Max writes totally different to that. Mm -hmm. You just go at it. 
I don't write. <laughs> he's he's, like he's gotten better about it. sort of sort of loose outlining because he'll write down things. He talks about outlining and yeah. thinks about outlining, but I don't know if he I does planned that. outline, but then I did not. Yeah, well, the last book you did though, you actually wrote down things where you needed it to go. I won't outline till I get like fifty thousand words written, and then it's like, well, I don't know what I need to happen now. Yeah, <laughs> and that's when I begin graphing things out. Uh, Tracy wants to know what inspired the novel Arachnophile. I'm an arachnophobe, arachnophobe too, and the idea just unsettles me. L O L. Oh, well, that's pretty much what inspired it. Um, I was working on something for the new Bizarro Author series, and I came up with a few different ideas, and uh, that was the one we stuck with, the one a guy falls in love with his giant spider that moves it next door. But I'm also super, like, I used to be really afraid of spiders. And since writing it, I'm not as much. I think I seduced myself or something. <laughs> it's not a book uh, about um, fucking a spider? Yeah, it's a okay. book about a guy who fucks a spider. And there's a lot of spider fucking. So, yeah. Okay, we have uh, one last question. Yes. From Michael David Wilson. Yes, he says, before setting out to write The Writhing Skies, were there any tropes or cliches you consciously avoided? Also, this is the first time I've noticed your favorite film is Return to Oz. For some reason, I remember this film existed the other day. After Holy <laughs> shit. That's what he said. Yeah. yeah, It's an excellent film. I love Return to Oz. It's very uh, bizarre. You watched that recently, didn't you, Max? I did. Correct. It's crazy. You know, I, I read the book when I was a kid because my mom owned all of the Oz books. I mean, there's like 20 or 30 of oh, them. Oh, there's so many. My, yeah. my favorite Oz book is the one where they go to prison. Uh, <laughs> and there's a lot of male rape in it. I don't know. It's Oz. <laughs> but, and I remember the wheelers and stuff, but I don't know if I've ever seen the movie. I might have as a kid. But the I, movie goes a lot weirder than the Yeah, books. well. The are, like, have a little bit of. They don't get as spooky, but. Return to Oz was batshit insane. Like, it starts out with Dorothy getting electroshock right. therapy because she can't stop thinking about Oz. Right. Real I do talk. remember that. It's kind of crazy. Um, what's the question? Oh, about writing skies. Um, <laughs> I definitely wanted to make sure the aliens were not aliens that you're used to seeing in Rising Skies. I wanted them to be very inhuman and not have human motivations. Um, in general, when I'm writing, I try to make sure not to go with my first idea for anything because I know that's probably something I've seen before or a trope. Or... So I try to make sure unexpected things happen and go in different directions when I spot those in my work. Um, the only thing I can really think of that I consciously was working on was making the aliens really weird. And like I took a lot of inspiration from undersea creatures for the aliens. Um... Yeah, and as far as tropes go, that was the one I majorly concentrate on in this book. But I do, in my writing in general, try to avoid doing the same thing that you see so often. Right. It makes sense. Uh, I think that's it, right? I believe so. Okay, yeah. So, um, you know, do some plugging, I guess. Oh, well, everyone should uh, read Writhing Skies, my newest book from you guys. It's about goopy underwater aliens and date rape and abusive boyfriends and creepy skies. And yeah, I think you'll like it if you like gross things. I agree. You would. How can they find you online? Oh, BettyRocksteady.com. Well, thank you for coming on. Oh yeah, it was great. It's been a while. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay, and that was The Breathing Method with special guest, Betty Rocksteady, all the way from Canada. Canada, as they say, I believe. Maybe not. Anyway, uh, you know, go buy Betty's book, The Writhing Skies. It's available on all the places you buy books. If you go to our website at perpetualpublishing.com, you can find it uh, in the shop 
and you if you enter discount code constant listenal upon checkout you get 10 full cent off you can buy an amazon too if you want Barnes and noble maybe an indie bookshop yeah it's a good book go get it um, usually we discuss news now, but you know, nothing's really going on. No, no news. So I'll just end this show. Make it cease to exist. If you go to our website at castlerockcast.com, you can, you know, do the things you do on websites. That's where you can find an ongoing list of Stephen King rankings. We do sell t-shirts at tpublic.com slash usel slash PMM Publishing. We have a Facebook group. Go to uh, Facebook and type in Castle Rock Radio colon for fans of Stephen King podcasts and dick jokes. You can tweet at us at Castle Rock Cast. You can email us at Castle Rock Cast at gmail.com we have a newsletter I usually write a weekly newsletter just go to pmmpnews.com and it will give you a way to subscribe and lastly please please go and pledge to our Patreon if you like the show we do and you want to support what we do patreon.com slash pmmpublishing Oh, and also, you know, leave a review on iTunes, a rating and a review of the podcast, and, you know, just a couple builds like what you think about the show. Doesn't have to be too uh, thought out, just the more ratings we get, the more reviews we get, the more eyes this podcast might stumble upon, and the longer we will do the show. I mean, this isn't something we uh, necessarily will always keep doing, but, you know, if enough people listen to it, I don't see a reason why we have to stop. You know, it's a fun program we put on. It takes a lot of work, though, since, you know, we have to read all these things beforehand. I mean, so, yeah, some reviews, some support on Patreon, that would really help us all out. So, you know, do that if you had a fun time with what we just put on. Next week on the show, it's going to be a big episode, folks. We are talking about Stephen King's The Shining. That's right. One of the most infamous novels of Stephen King's bibliography. The Shining. And the week after that, We'll be talking about Kubrick's adaptation. That's right. We're going to make it a separate episode. It's going to be uh, two weeks of nothing but The Shining. So, prepare for that shit. Until then. uh, I don't know. Have a spooky day. I don't have a fucking catchphrase. Just, okay, bye. Okay.